That's a bit more like it, Tottenham Hotspur. A convincing, in the end, 3-1 win against Nottingham Forest in the Premier League to take us into the top four above Aston Villa. And luckily, because of Manchester United's result against Liverpool, they look like they're out the top four race as well. Villa, you know, still got a tricky few fixtures to go, but so do we. So it's going to be a very interesting end to the top four race. Let me know in the comments down below straight away. Who do you think is going to win the top four race? Will it be Tottenham or will it be Aston Villa? Let me know all your guys' thoughts. But the reason I'm uploading today and not yesterday, straight after the game, I was at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. My first game at home in a while. Uh, and it was a great day out. It was a really, really good time. I've actually got, oh, got stretched over here. Got me program here, little sun special. So happy to pick up a copy of that. And um, nice thing before kickoff as well in a little like celebration for his 400 appearances. Um, so that was really, really good. And you know the the game, the atmosphere was incredible. Got some actually bits of footage, so I might as well show them now. Third ball for Spurs on the 58th minute of number 23, Petro Polo. But yeah, back to the crux of all of this, the game. And, you know, the title might hint towards a bigger overall picture because I'll get onto that in due course. But to start with, I thought we started well again. You know, a bit like the West Ham game, started straight out of the blocks, giving, um, you know, Forrest, putting them under the, pre under the cosh early doors. And, you know, we had some good chances, but we just weren't putting them away. I mean, there was the, there was a chance where Murillo like tries to chip Vicario from like miles away, and I thought from where I was sitting in the south stand, I thought that's going in, um, but luckily it missed. But then a team over and across, who I actually thought team over had quite a good game yesterday. Team over and across comes off Murillo, uh, yet again, and goes in for the one nil. And you think one nil up, we need to keep going, kill the game off, all that sort of stuff. But a moment of a switch off from a doggy, and then the whole defence shifts over and Chris Wood tucks it away against the runner play. And, you know, when that happens, you think, here we go again, you know, we're, we're, it's one of those games, you know, it's, it's Luton, it's Palace, you know, all these sort of games we've had recently. But you know that Tottenham can put a performance on as the game goes on. But then Forrest have this chance, which, and from where I was sitting, how it didn't go in, I will never know. So... I can't remember who had the original shot, but Vicario saves it. And then Chris Woods, all he's got to do is tap it in. But Chris Wood hits the woodwork. Chris Woodwork, that's what we'll call him. And I was just absolutely, I don't know, I was perplexed. I, 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 how he's not scored here and how we're not 2-1 down, I will never know. But that was sort of the last thing that Forrest really did. But Ange made a change at half-time. And that's where the title comes into play. But before I get into that point, if you are new to the channel, why don't you leave a like on the video, subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs, hit the notification bell, and also link in the description down below. You can become a member of Sunny Talk Spurs, only 99p a month, and get exclusive access to my podcast, Nice One Sunny. You can submit questions on there, I do Q&As, all sorts of good stuff, so get involved with that today. But going on to the title now, and proved everyone wrong he was willing to change the team now personally i thought you know sar was he was all right basuma had his moments but defensively so what did uh and Postacoglu do he took both of them off even my dad was claiming that he was texting me at half time being like we need to take these two off we need to we need to shore up the midfield and i was like uh, okay 
And then as it happened, the switch, I, I was like, oh, you got your wish. And then Hoy Bear comes on and also Benson Core. I think Benson Core made sense because you think, you know, we probably could have done with a more more creative passing because Madison was struggling in the game as well to sort of unlock the door. But Hoybeer, you're like, oh, like if, there's a big question marks over Hoybeer because he's leaving. He said comments about the manager, but he was great. Like until the latter stages where he was taking a free kick and um, a bit dilly dallying on the ball, he was great. Like he was really, really good. So that didn't surprise me. And he shored that midfield up. He needed a bit of grit, you know. Forest have some mercenaries in their midfield and they needed to be sorted. Um, so then you come out in the second half and he sort of started how we, how, you know, sort of carried on how it was. And um, we have a corner. And uh, ironically, the guy I sit next to who takes me to Tottenham when, when he has a free ticket, uh, available ticket, he goes, oh, we're just so bad from corners. We kept playing them short, didn't we? We kept playing them short. And um, then Sun gets it on the edge of the area. And Mickey gets it and he drives. And I'm not seeing a score goal like that for a little while. Sort of into the area and just smacking one in. And what a shot. And Mickey van der Ven, rightful man of the match. What a player he is, by the way. Mickey van der Ven, just, a, just an absolute find from Tottenham. He is going to be... I mean, Jamie Redknapp, I think, compared him to Virgil van Dijk uh, levels. Like Saliba. You know, he's in really good company. He's quick. You know, there was moments yesterday where he's just beating players for pace down the channels. He is absolutely unreal. And he gets his first home goal of um, the Premier League season. He scored away against Lewin, didn't he, from that corner. But then, and it's the most Spurs thing ever, We have it was a little flurry. And the well-worked goal from Brennan Johnson to knock it down to Pedro Porro to make it 3-1. What a hit by Pedro Porro. I just saw on Twitter before I recorded... Um, his goal catalogue for Tottenham is something. They're just some unbelievable goals. And I think there was a stat last week that Pedro Poro might have changed, but he was the top Premier League player to have the most shots without scoring a goal. But he's now scored a goal in the Premier League. He obviously scored in the FA Cup this season as well, but got his first Premier League goal of the season. And, you know, after that, Son had a chance, saved by Sells really well. But... Yeah, it showed this game, I think, in hindsight, in conclusion, and can change it tactically. And people say, but you're still playing the same sort of football. But they were having so much joy, Adogi and Pedro Porro. Like, they couldn't handle it. We just needed someone in, we needed a bruiser and a bit more of a passer in the midfield. So Andy's willing to change at half-time. All this about late subs, he, he is willing to change it. And, you know... This game will be important because we need to pick up points in these games because when we look ahead to Liverpool, Chelsea, um, Manchester City, Arsenal, that is four tricky fixtures. And I know Chelsea people go, oh, but it's Chelsea. The Chelsea away, we haven't got a good record. <laughs> you never know. We might be like rabbits in the headlights that night. But this is an important game. Really good home victory. You've got to pick your points up at home. You know, some really good individual performances as well. Um, you know, just a moment of switch off twice. We've just got to hone in on that. Like, that wasn't just like Tottenham's poor defensive record. It was just a moment of switch off, um, really. Which they will work on under Ange Postecoglou. That's just, you know, the nature of the beast this first season. So, yeah, optimistic. Really good result. Glad I was there to witness it as well. But, as I said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you make of the game? How important is the result? Do you like the tactical switch that Ange Postecoglou made? All your thoughts, get them in the comments down below and I'll be replying to them straight away. But as I said, if you are new to the channel, why don't you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Become a member today for 99p a month to get access to my podcast. And until my next video, I'll see you guys then. Ciao.